Let's explore all these theorems and postulates that have to do with angles formed by two lines and a transversal. Start with corresponding angles. One and two are clearly corresponding angles. We know there's three other pairs on this drawing, but let's just start with those. And I'm going to start with this postulate. Yes, it's a postulate. Notice there's an if-then. If two lines, well, if two parallel lines. Well, right now the blue and purple aren't parallel. Let's make it so. I'm going to move them this way. And I'm going to say, well, if those lines are parallel, then I can conclude that this pair, 1 and 2, are congruent. This pair of angles are congruent. This pair of corresponding angles, or finally, this pair of corresponding angles. So all of those pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. I may also write it this way in my proofs. A little bit of shorthand. I don't mind if you do this because you're going to be writing this a lot. Now, um, we're going to have a look at, hang on a second, let's clean this, change this drawing around. And I'm going to start with, instead of the lines being parallel, I'm going to start with a pair of congruent angles. This is the converse. This is postulate 16. So again, we need to use a separate postulate in this case. If two lines are cut by a transversal, the red transversal, in such a way that these two angles, these two angles, or these two angles, or even these two angles, are congruent, that's telling us that what I've got is a pair of congruent corresponding angles. Then I can conclude that the lines are parallel. Again, that's the reverse or, as we say, the converse. So in shorthand, let's put it up like that. And if you want to have a good visual for how this is going to look in your proofs, again, some of you write the longhand. Most of you are going to use the shorthand. Let's put them up there together. I'll take this one down, and I'll put this one here. There you can see the comparison. So again, it's, it's all about direction. Starting with parallel lines, make corresponding angles congruent. Starting with corresponding angles congruent makes the lines parallel. Well, let's move right along to alternate interior angles. As you can see, I've got 5 and 6 here. And again, I've got these two lines, the blue and purple, cut by the red transversal. And we're going to pursue the same thing. Notice, this is a theorem. Theorem means it can be proved or proven, and perhaps you're proving it as an exercise in your class. So, again, if two parallel lines. Well, they don't look parallel yet, so let's make it so. I'm going to make them look parallel, and I'm going to say, once I've got that, I've got the parallel marks right there. The little arrow says parallel. So now those two lines are parallel, and of course I've got two pairs of alternate interior angles. That would be 5 and 6, or the other unnumbered pair right there. So either pair of these are, of course, congruent. All right? That makes sense. And are we going to write it in a shorthand? Yeah, we will. Theorem 3.1. If parallel lines, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So, all right, let's, um, well, let's clean this up again like we did last time. And let's try it in reverse. I'm going to state the converse, which is also one of our theorems. The alternate interior angle converse, if these two lines, the blue and the purple, are cut by the red transversal in such a way that angles 5 and 6 or the other pair are congruent, then it follows that these lines are parallel. And I would write it this way. That would be the alternate interior angle converse. If alternate interior angles are congruent, then parallel lines. Just like we did before, Let's put, them to, uh, let's put them together like this. I'll take that away, put that one up there, and now you can see them. Theorem 3.1, theorem 3.4. It's converse. Well, another diagram, angles 7 and 9, a pair of alternate exterior angles, will generate two more theorems. Theorem 3.2. Again, if the lines are parallel. I keep stressing that because I want to make sure you're following, you're paying attention there. If this... Once I've got that blue and that purple line parallel, then I can say that 7 and 9 
are congruent, or the other pair of alternate exterior angles are congruent. And like we're used to oh, in the way there, we've got ourselves a little bit of shorthand. All right. And as you'd expect, I'm going to take this away and we're going to state the converse or the reverse, which is to say, if angles 7 and 9, for instance, are congruent, then I can conclude that the lines are parallel. So that would be the reverse or the converse. And I would write it this way if I'm writing it in shorthand. So let's put the two shorthands up there so we can have them for comparison. So we'll get that, that, and there you go. Theorem 3.2, theorem 3.5. Forward and reverse. Our final pair of theorems is going to be consecutive interior angles, such as angles 1 and 2 here. So this is going to be a little bit different. Again, let's go with this theorem, put it up there. Theorem 3.3. If two lines are parallel, well, let's make those two lines, the blue and the purple, parallel. Then, see, well, put those parallel marks in there. There you go, those tick marks say parallel. Then I can conclude that angles 1 and 2 are supplementary. Or I can conclude that angles 3 and 4 are supplementary. This is a little bit different, so pay attention to that. There's These angles are not congruent. They could be. They could be in the case of right angles, but generally they're not. So right here I've got these two angles, the two blue angles, are supplementary as a result of the lines being parallel. If I wanted to write shorthand, I might be able to write it this way. Okay, let's change this up a little bit. Let's get rid of this. Same thing. Same thing I'm, I'm going to say. In reverse, that if I start with this, that is, if I start with these angles, supplementary, or these angles, supplementary, then I can conclude that the lines are parallel. Of course, that would be the converse. And let's write the converse this way in shorthand. All right, so if we want to clean this up a little bit, We'll put the converse of both theorems up there. Take that away. We'll take that away and we'll put that up there. So I've got theorem 3.3 3, and I've got its converse, theorem 3.6. Parallel lines, consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Well, here's an interesting little theorem called the transitive property of parallel lines. Let's start with this one. R, a good pirate line right there, the purple line, R. And I'm going to say that P is parallel to R. So I've got the tick marks there to indicate. And I say, all right, well, that's nice. I've got the blue line is parallel to the purple one. Now let me make another line, make a red one that's also parallel to the purple one. So now I've got Q is parallel to R. And I'm looking at this property, and I can see parallel, parallel. So I guess the red is parallel to the blue, and that's my conclusion. Pretty neat, huh? Well, let's explore this transitive property as it relates to perpendicularity. Let's see if this is true. I'm going to take this purple line, S, perpendicular to R. Then I'm going to take line T, the red one, perpendicular to S. So R is perpendicular to S, S is perpendicular to T. Well, if it were transitive, then R would be perpendicular to T. And that's just crazy. Look at that. They don't look anything like perpendicular lines, the red and the blue. If anything, they could be parallel. I say could be because they could also be skewed. It could be skewed. It could be in three dimensions. But these two lines are definitely not, not perpendicular. So this is not a theorem.